These are the unintended consequences when an uninformed politician cannot see uh, the, the future and does not understand economics. Three senators have introduced a bill that, if passed, will most likely cause a stock market crash and potentially propel us into the greatest depression. Um, many people don't know this, but uh, I have owned Teslas. I, my first Tesla was a 2010 Roadster. My second Tesla, which I still own, is a 2011 Roadster. My third Tesla was a 2012 Model S Signature Edition. And my fourth Tesla is the 2018 uh, Model 3 dual motor performance that I uh, currently drive on a regular basis. It's here in Puerto Rico. My Roadster is still on the mainland uh, uh, getting some modifications. Uh, but uh, once you, these cars have the highest customer loyalty that there is. Uh, I don't talk about them much. I mean, once you've owned one, you just can't buy anything else. I don't talk about them much because they are so polarizing. So many people just hate Elon Musk and they hate Tesla and they want it to fail badly. Um, I'm basically a Tesla supporter, but because it is so controversial and polarizing, I stay away from it because I want people to learn about economics. They don't have to learn about Tesla. That's just fine. But I came across this because I'm addicted to Tesla news. So I go to this website, teslarati.com, uh, and I do it a couple of times a week just to see how quickly this guy is changing the world. Uh, he's already cut more than 50% out of the cost of space travel. And uh, it, it, by the time he's done, he will have cut more than 90% of the cost of space travel. Uh, but anyway, Bernie Sanders wants to wants Elon Musk to pay a one-time $27.5 billion tax. Well, it isn't just Elon Musk. Um, you know, this is written on uh, that website, but basically it's a 60% tax on gains made uh, from March 18th, 2020. That was when the stock market bottomed in March. <clears throat> so all of these people that had stock lost a, a huge a portion of their wealth. Uh, through January 1st, 2020, where they made a large portion of their wealth back. Now, with Elon Musk, he met a lot of production targets and so on. Uh, they're the only automotive company to show growth in the uh, second quarter of 2020. Every other automotive company shrank as far as the number of cars produced, and they showed a profit in the second quarter of 2020 during the global health problem. Um, and so this is the Make Billionaires Pay Act, and he's talking about a 60% tax during that market, the, the rebound from the market crash, and uh, uh, it'll tax $731 billion of wealth uh, of 467 different billionaires, and so it's going to raise $421 billion in taxes. Now, what Bernie doesn't seem to understand, you know, this is, uh, I'm sorry, it's not just Bernie. So I like to try to uh, not be political and to keep my political bashing, uh, uh, you know, even. I try and bash Republicans and Democrats the same because both of them have spending problems uh, and they, uh, they, they can't get it under control and it doesn't matter which party it is. So um, uh, anyway. This 421.7 billion, they don't happen to have that in their wallets right now. They don't happen to have that in their checking accounts. Um, you know, it's supposed to be enough to pay for all of the out-of-pocket out of health care expenses for everyone in America over the next 12 months. So that's the reason for it. But in order for um, uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon to pay $42.8 billion and for Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook to pay $22.8 billion and for Elon Musk to pay $27.5 billion. Now, a lot of that profit, like I said, he had in his contract where he's awarded stock uh, if he meets certain performance goals. He only gets paid minimum wage from Tesla minimum wage in California, and then he doesn't cash the checks. They just build up in an account. He gets paid stock, uh, and I believe 
that he actually borrows from Goldman Sachs against his stock. Um, and that's how he's able to live uh, a billionaire life, lifestyle. But uh, if, if these 467 billionaires are all forced to pay $421.7 billion, that means that they have to sell $421.7 billion worth of stock all in a short period of time to be able to hand all of this cash over to the government. This has to go into their checking accounts and then they'll do a wire transfer to the government, which means that um, these 467 different billionaires probably, you know, if you take a look at the companies in the stock market, just the ones that have been mentioned, Amazon, uh, Facebook, and Tesla are a huge percentage of the stock market. But if you take all of these billionaires, it probably makes up more than half the value of the, st of the stock market. And they've got to sell this close to half a trillion dollars worth of stock all at the same time, causing what would be an enormous stock market crash requiring the, the Federal Reserve to rush in and do bailouts. These are the unintended consequences when an uninformed politician cannot see uh, the, the future and does not understand economics. But it isn't just Bernie Sanders. This is also Ed Markey and uh, Christian Gillibrand. Uh, so Kristen Gillibrand. Um, and so it, it's, it just shows there are, there's no politicians that seem to know economics. Very few. I mean, Ron Paul did and Rand Paul does. There, there are just a few in there. Nobody wants to listen to them. They want to remain economically ignorant, and that's what they are. I'm not picking it on Bernie Sanders as a person. I'm picking on Bernie Sanders' economic ignorance. Now, um, if, you, if we move on to the next articles, this one, Bernie Sanders mulls uh, Make Billionaires Pay Act, uh, zones in on Bezos, Musk, and, and Zuckerberg, uh, and when you go down to the bottom here, uh, it says that uh, while Zuckerberg, Bezos, and the Waltons have yet to react, Musk took the challenge head on, Musk took the challenge head on with a meme. Every time the Bernster mentions a free government program, chug somebody else's beer. <laughs> the irrepressible billionaire tweeted back, and so here's his tweet. And I just think that uh, you know. Elon Musk often sticks his foot in his mouth. He, he uh, says things when he shouldn't. He just doesn't seem to have those filters as far as uh, uh, being able to see the consequences of what he says. But he has a high level of belief in the, in the things that he is doing. Uh, they are the only co they're, they're the fastest growing car company on the planet. Well, all the, all the others are shrinking, by the way. Uh, and uh, it's because it's a mission-driven company. Tesla only exists to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy on this planet. That's the only reason. It's not all the other companies, their mission, the reason for their existence is to make a profit. That's all. Uh, so here is the bill. And at the end of the bill, it says that, uh, you know, he's demanding that billionaires pay their fair share of taxes. What is your fair share? This is a highly uh, questionable thing. There's different viewpoints on this. Now, it could be a fixed percentage for everybody would be a fair share. Um, what people seem to think is fair, what the majority wants, because uh, the majority actually does not fall. That's the, uh, the majority is the middle class to the poor. So uh, the mean there is probably uh, the bottom of the middle class and uh, people that are poor but not so poor. So that's the mean. So that's where the majority of votes come from. And uh, uh, he's demanding that billionaires pay their fair share of taxes. Now, um, we have a progressive uh, tax system where the more you make, the more you pay. And then we've got all of these tax loopholes where the government tries to get uh, punish people for doing certain things and encourage people for doing uh, other things. And when you can afford to pay somebody, uh, you, you know, CPA firms, a million dollars a year or $10 million a year 
to figure out your taxes and create loopholes and corporations and stuff, you pay a lower rate. So if, uh, uh, if Jeff Bezos uh, made $71 billion, he's probably going to pay only a billion dollars on that $71 billion. But what is your real fair share? Is life like an entrance to Disneyland? Uh, this is what the government spends on us. So total government expenditures. And it was uh, 700 and it was about 7.5 billion. And you take that figure and you divide it into uh, 330 million people. And the government is spending about $22,000 per person before the crisis. Now they're spending uh, almost uh, 10 trillion. So now they're spending $33,000 a piece on us, roughly, instead of $22,000 a piece. So that means for a family of four, <laughs> they, they're, they're fair. If, if you're standing at, in the line at Disneyland and you go, oh, I don't make as much as he does, he'll pay. And then he gets up, oh, I don't make as much as he does, he'll pay. And then you get the next person gets, oh, I don't make up. And then finally that billionaire gets to the front of the line and, said, and they hand him a, a bill. <laughs> I mean, a family of four typically does not pay $130,000 of income tax. And that's the break-even point. If they pay less than $130,000 of income tax this coming year, they are receiving benefits taken from others. This is just math, and it's just the facts. It's not me being a mean person by saying so. It's taking these figures and dividing them into the population, and that's what you come away with, is this coming year, in order to cover what the government spends on us, each of us has to cough up $33,000 in tax each. I, I pay a lot, lot more than that, I'll tell you that. I've paid for myself and many, many, many other people. Uh, so uh, I'm going to wrap up this video now, and uh, I want to wish all of you the best of luck uh, during the economic crisis that is coming and, uh, and during this global health problem. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you got anything from this, please like it, share it, give it that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and go to goldsilver.com and get my book. Thank you very much.